very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And I rise to speak in support, but in conditional support of the bill that Dr. Hashwadanji has just introduced before us. Uh, we all know, as he pointed out, that the growth of technology is revolutionizing the way we all leave our, lead our lives. And frankly, uh, we are struggling in many ways to adapt to its demands. So uh, uh, it is important. Uh, we, I was listening attentively to his introduction. Biotechnology, of course, is not really a new science uh, in the sense that in earlier forms it has existed perhaps for centuries. But as he rightly said in its modern manifestation, biotechnology, which involves the manipulation of the genetic structure uh, of organisms, and introduction of characteristics can, that can actually bring in specific traits that are helpful to human beings. This is a relatively new science, and I'm very pleased that India is very much in the forefront in biotechnology. One could argue that the development of the field through, for example, the advent of genetics has opened really exciting opportunities in this sector, and um, there are so many applications. He has given us some examples, which I won't repeat, but overall, the improvement of human health, food production, uh, reduction of environmental damage, um, insulin and hepatitis vaccine have already been mentioned. BT cotton has been a big success story. We used to be short of cotton, we're now exporting cotton, and it's one of the, the great uh, satisfactions of the, of the UPA government that we did the work we did on BT cotton. Um, I do want to stress, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, this new era in the history of mankind that we're talking about um, uh, is going to increase rapidly in India, no question about it. The applications of modern biotechnology have a great future here, uh, same for around the world. It holds great potential uh, to give us new solutions, solutions we can't perhaps even imagine today uh, on the health and quality of life of our Indian citizens plus, of course, the significant imp uh, improvements in agricultural productivity that he mentioned, more nutritious food, as well as, of course, uh, sustaining development. Sustainable development means development with regard to the environment, and that may be easier to do with biotechnology. I am increasingly convinced that biotechnology has the potential, Mr. Chairman, to replace information technology as the main engine for development of India and indeed of the world. And this is why I'm, I'm quite uh, pleased to, to welcome the, the, uh, the points made here by Dr. Harshwadhan. I would add to those uh, gene therapy, another tool that holds the uh, great potential for hope, um, even though, of course, we don't know enough about it yet, but the prospects are there. Uh, xenotransplantation, which involves transplanting body parts from animals into human beings, uh, that's being talked about. We are not, not yet there in that in our area, the Chinese are ahead of us. Nanotechnology, a uh, process of transition here. And then, of course, from a security point of view, the risks of bioterrorism cannot be underestimated. We are facing such serious terrorism threats in our country, and the fact is that uh, there are serious implications if biological agents can be used uh, to harm our people. Uh, I agree with the Honorable Minister that India is poised to emerge as a force, a real force to reckon with, in the biotechnology sector. We're well on the way to being a $10 billion industry already, and that's why the industrial applications are important. It's a great opportunity for companies in the private sector as well, and they need to work with academic institutions to network and develop uh, ties with the industry so that our uh, growth of biotechnology can proceed in both areas. And this is why, Mr. Chairman, I'm so pleased to welcome uh, the bill um, uh, as it has been put forward to us here by the Honorable Minister. Nonetheless, there are a few things that I want to bring to his attention as he moves forward with this bill, and that's why I spoke of conditional support. First is uh, that we still need to do a great deal more, uh, Mr. Minister, in improving the quality and quantity of our biotechnology graduates to meet the demands of the biotech industry. There is an independent report by Ernst & Young, which is actually quite critical both of the number of biotech graduates we have, uh, perhaps because of the paucity of institutions, and also of the quality of many of these graduates, and I think we need to address that. Uh, secondly, the government itself is lagging behind 
Uh, Dr. Harshwadhan said that this has taken a long time. There are other things that have taken a long time. I think that the Indian government quickly needs to enact regulatory reforms um, and, and do much more on the infrastructure front as well, uh, as well as providing more incentives to biotechnology. I'll come back to regulation in a minute, but inadequate infrastructure is pointed to by everybody, even the existing leaders of the biotechnology industry, such as the founder. The chair Biocon, Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, said in an interview that it, it's really a crying shame how poor structure is. And um, I'm sure that uh, Dr. Joshua is going to talk to his colleague, the finance minister, about improving some financial incentives to the biotech industry, which frankly are simply not present right now. Um, I do want to point out also that, as he mentioned, this bill will grant the new institution in Faridabad, set up in 2009, the uh, status of an institute of national importance. Now, that's very important. I welcome that. But I do want to point out that in my constituency of Tiruvannathapuram, the Rajiv Gandhi Center uh, for Biotechnology, which Dr. Harshwadanji has visited with me uh, in my constituency a few months ago, um, was established seven years before Faridabad in 2002 and has also been requesting its upgradation to a status of uh, an institution of national importance. We know the case for the Faridabad Center is that it would provide them with facilities such as ease of technology transfer, recognition as a global platform, the right to give degrees, uh, resources for conducting quality research, but in the, their welcome focus on this new institution, they should not forget the earlier ones. And I'm sure that Dr. Harshwadhan, who had a very positive visit to the Rajiv Gandhi Institute in, in Tiruvannathapuram, will agree with me that we don't want to leave a, a, a pioneer in this area by the wayside. And I really feel that uh, we need to, to offer this kind of support. I want to point, if I may, to Wikipedia, which has a ranking of the top 10 schools uh, universities offering. Uh, courses in biotechnology in India. Number one is the Institute of Chemical Technology in Mumbai, and number two is the Rajiv Gandhi Center for Biotechnology in Tiruvannathapuram. I'm afraid the Faridabad Center doesn't yet feature in the top ten. So we have a long way to go. I'm not in any way uh, uh, speaking against an institution. I want more institutions uh, in our country, uh, and I want them all to be good. But please honor the ones that are doing well, that are working well, that require support. I also want to point to one particular uh, mention in the bill that Dr. Harshwadhan did not mention in his remarks. Um, he mentioned the various objectives of the bill, and uh, I don't think we have any fundamental problem with them. But one of the functions spelled out in Section 9 is to develop and implement a policy for intellectual property rights, IPR, with equitable and just provisions for all stakeholders, quote unquote. Now, this is a priority function, as you know, Mr. Chairman. The preservation of intellectual property uh, is, is a broad principle that India is committed to, but the intellectual property rights of biotechnology research has been a major concern, uh, partly because of the complexity of provisions in IPR laws around the world, and certainly uh, our own uh, IPR laws have led something to be desired. Now, in this context, I do want to mention that there are a whole number of issues with regard to TRIPS. Our patent laws don't match the trade-related intellectual property laws that we have signed up to as a government. And I would urge uh, the, the, the minister to kindly pay some serious attention uh, to this question of reconciling trade-related intellectual property rights to our Indian patent laws and, if necessary, moving to amend our laws as appropriate, uh, or at least then to put conditions on our accession to the, to the TRIPS, because this again becomes a significant factor in the growth of the biotechnology industry. And then I, I want to express some concern, Mr. Chairman, uh, and indeed, indeed some disappointment that this House has not enacted uh, a bill from the UPA era, the Biotechnology Regulatory Authority of India Bill 2013. We introduced it in the Lok Sabha in April of 2013, it was referred to a committee, it never came back with all the various disruptions of the House, and in the end it was not adopted. The, of course, the bill that's introduced in the Lok Sabha lapsed when the previous Lok Sabha got dissolved. I would like to urge my good friend, uh, the Honorable Minister, to take up this issue. The question of regulating biotechnology has to move side by side with all the enthusiasm that he has rightly shown 
for the creation of the institute in Faridabad and the new bill. Uh, I am all in favor of us cooperating with UNESCO. I welcome the fact that we want to be a hub for the other countries of South Asia and Southeast Asia. All that is well. But what is the regulatory framework under which our biotechnology work is going? This institute has not been planted out of, uh, out of nowhere. There is a context. The context lies in the laws, rules and regulations of India, which very frankly, in our own estimation as a government, when we were in government, we felt were inadequate for the challenges that the country faces, and we therefore produced a, uh, a draft regulation. Now, we are not wedded to one particular bill or form of bill, but we would urge the minister to go back to that bill, resurrect it, taking into account the findings of the committee that looked into the bill in 2013, which I believe has submitted its report, and then to see whether we can't move side by side. That is, yes, we can go ahead and adopt this bill today, but as part of the process, you are creating institutions, you are saying they are of national importance, let us also as part of that process have an adequate regulatory framework. This is required by the Convention on Biological Diversity, which we are a signatory of. It is also part of the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. Because after all, regulation is not only about control or command and control. I myself am not a great fan of command and control systems. What we are worried about is under what framework will these institutions grow? And how can we ensure that we are also kept safe in the process? The purpose of regulation must be the protection of the Indian people, just as the purpose of the growth of biotechnology must be the prosperity, the health, the well-being of the Indian people. So I think the objectives we cannot disagree with. We, we are all in the same view. We do know that some of our friends in the environmental NGOs have a slightly more challenging notion of some of these issues when it comes to us, when it comes to issues of biotechnology. Um, and, and I don't want to enter into all those debates here because we will uh, needlessly take up the time of this House. Uh, it's certainly worth returning to this debate on a later date because uh, very recently one of our major media outlets had a, an interesting column attacking uh, the political establishment for having been so backward in its attitude to biotechnology in relation to agriculture. And I'm sure that many uh, would agree that, uh, that we can be more imaginative in extending the benefits of biotechnology. So having said all this, let me once again welcome this bill. Let me request the minister to, along with it, please look at the regulatory authority bill, also to look at the patent structures in the country, to look further at the uh, inadequate infrastructure that is hobbling our biotechnology companies, and finally to encourage our biotechnology companies and academic institutions to work together. When you have an institution like this one in Faridabad, it would be very, very helpful if they were encouraged, indeed permitted in the first place, to have a relationship with private sector companies so they can do collaborative research with industrial applications and marketing potential. Can you imagine a situation where a company goes to this institute and says, uh, here we have X number of rupees to offer you. If you have the right kind of PhD students, we want you to research this and we will help you. And then if you actually find the solution, we can patent it together uh, or you can patent it and we can produce it and we can share the profits. This kind of thing happens routinely in the Western world. It doesn't happen enough in our country. And I urge uh, the, the minister in administering this institution to ensure that all these possibilities are also included. With these words, Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I would like to express uh, our support for the passage of this bill and these are taken forward in its implementation in the years to come. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.